All right, in this video, I'm going to do another example of finding a partial fraction decomposition. And here we're going to do example B. Um, so again, the first thing I have to think is uh, sometimes you have to worry about doing long division for these rational functions. And you have to do long division if the degree of the numerator is greater than or equal to the degree of the denominator. But if I were to multiply out the denominator in this case, I, I recognize that, well, I would really just get an x cubed uh, uh, as, my, as my highest powered term. I would get uh, degree 3, so we don't have to worry about long division. But one thing I do always have to ask myself, because sometimes you'll be given things in uh, uh, a form that's not completely factored, is I have to think, well, does this denominator factor any further? And I think the answer here is yes. Notice x squared plus 6x plus 9. That factors as x plus 3 times x plus 3. So really, we've got this uh, negative x squared plus 2x minus 5. In the denominator, we have x plus 1. But then we have x plus 3, a linear factor, but it's re repeated. So I'm going to write x plus 3 squared. And again, the rule is, um, OK, so the x plus 1 is going to get its own little fraction. Uh, we're going to use an x plus 3 to the first power. But then we have to also use an x plus 3 to the second power. So I look inside the parentheses. Each of these are linear terms. In the numerator, we use something of 1 degree less, which would just be a constant. So I'm going to use positive, or just the constant a, the constant b, and the constant c. And again, now I have to figure out my, uh, uh, my, my constants, a, b, and c. So what I'm going to do is, we'll see if we can't squeeze it in here, um, I'm going to multiply the left side, just like in the other examples, by the denominator. So I'm going to multiply by x plus 1 times x plus 3 quantity squared. If we do that on the left side, um, everything would cancel, and I would just be left with this negative x squared plus 2x minus 5. So that's all I'm left with on the left side. But on the right side, I've got to do the same thing. I've got to multiply by that whole denominator, this x plus 1 times x plus 3 quantity squared. So when I do that, um, when I distribute all of this to my, my first term, the x plus 1's would cancel. So we would be left with a times x plus 3 quantity squared. When I multiply all of this to the middle term, one of the x plus 3's would cancel. So we would still have x plus 1 times one of the x plus 3 factors. And then when I multiply all of this to my third term, the x plus 3 squared's would cancel. And I would just be left with c times x plus 1. OK, so now I've got this, uh, this, this equation with no, uh, you know, no, no fractions in there. Again, we could use this trick. We could plug in x equals negative 3. I think that would allow us to solve for c. We could plug in x equals negative 1. That would allow us to solve for a. Um, I'm still not quite sure how we would solve for b, though. Eventually, we'd have to do this process of equating coefficients. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. So on the left side, we've got our negative x squared plus 2x minus 5. Um, this would be x plus 3 times x plus 3. And you can check my arithmetic. This will be x squared plus 6x plus 9. Um, we've got b times, well, x and x would be x squared. We would get a 3x and then a 1x, which would give us positive 4x. Positive 1 times positive 3 would be positive 3. Um, and then we've got our uh, c times x plus 1. So the left side is just, just, just hanging out, uh, not doing anything. And again, I'm trying to get rid of all the parentheses so I can sort of regroup things on the right side and do this equating coefficients uh, stuff. So we've got a times x squared. We would have 6a times x. We would have 9 times a. Uh, when we distribute, we'll get a bx squared. We would get 4 times b times x. b times 3 would be 3b. And then we would have c times x plus c. Okay, So it's definitely easy to make a mistake on these. You're doing so many of these just little computations. Um, so you know, try to be as careful as, as, as one can, I guess. Um, negative x squared plus 2x minus 5. Uh, 
certainly I've made my share of mistakes on these. So I'm going to just try to group all of my like terms together. Um, I've got an ax squared and a bx squared. I don't see any other x, x squared terms. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor the x squared out, but I'm going to factor it out to the right side. So if I were to distribute that out, that would take care of my ax squared and my bx squared. Um, let's see, we've got some terms involving x. Uh, it looks like we've got this 6a, so I'm going to stick that in parentheses. That would take care of that term. We've got a 4b times x, that would take care of that term. And then we've got a c, so again I'm going to stick all that in parentheses and just factor my x out to the side. A is a constant, B is a constant, C is a constant, so 9A plus 3B plus C, those are all constants. So I'm going to stick those together, 9A plus 3B plus C. Okay, and now is where we create our little system of linear equations by equating coefficients. So um, let's see, <clears throat> so the coefficient in front of the x squared term on the left side is a negative 1. The coefficient in front of the x squared on the right side is a plus b, so that's going to be one of our equations. The coefficient in front of the x on the left side is positive 2, and the coefficient in front of the x on the right side is this 6a plus 4b plus c. And then um, our, our, co our constant on the left side is negative 5, and then our constant on the right side is this uh, 9a plus 3b plus c. So, all right, to me, we're, we're getting closer. Um, now what I want to try to do is, again, I've got a system of linear equations that I now have to, to try to solve. So there's different ways, again, to go about doing this. We could do lots of substitutions. I'm going to use some elimination by addition. And what I recognize is, I recognize, well, the first equation only has a and b in it. It looks like to me we could use our... our our middle two equations, and it would be easy to cancel out the c. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take my first equation and multiply both sides by negative 1. So if I, er, well, my first equation in this pair is what I mean to say. So I'm going to multiply the left side by negative 1, the right side also by negative 1. So that would simply give me negative 2 equals negative 6a minus 4b minus c. So I'm just taking the second one. I'm going to leave the third one alone, negative 5 equals 9a plus 3b plus c. And now if I add these together, well, negative 2 plus negative 5 is negative 7. Negative 6a plus 9a is going to be positive 3a. Uh, negative 4b plus 3b would ne be negative 1b. And then the c's would cancel out. Okay. So now I'm going to take this equation and use my very first equation because now I've got uh, uh, two equations that, that only involve two of the same unknowns. So I've got negative 1 equals a plus b. We've got negative 7 equals 3a minus b. And this again is kind of nice because now um, things are set up to where if I just immediately do elimination by addition, on the left side we get negative 1 plus negative 7 which is negative 8. And then we have uh, 1a plus 3a, which is 4a. Notice the b's cancel out. If I divide both sides by 4, I get a equals negative 2. All right, so we've got one of our values. And now I can use any equation I want to try to figure out the others. Well, again, we've got negative 1 equals a plus b. Let's use that one. So we've got negative 1 equals a, which we know is negative 2, plus b. Well, if I add 2 to both sides, I'll get positive 1 as my value for b. So now I know a, now I know b. I just need to take one of my equations that's got c in there. Let's use the second one. Um, so we've got 2 equals 6 times a, which we said is negative 2, plus 4 times b, which we said is positive 1, plus c. Well, let's see. Okay, so this is negative 12 plus 4. Negative 12 plus 4 would be negative 8. If we add 8 to both sides, um, I'm getting 10 on the left. We would be left with our positive c on the right. 
So now we've got our values. We've got our A, we've got our B, we've got our C, um, and we can simply write down our partial fraction decomposition at this point. So let me backtrack here and see if I can't, uh, can't find everything. Have I already lost it? Um, here we go. So we had A over X plus 1. So we had A over X plus 1 plus B over X plus 3 plus C over X plus 3 squared. And again, we figured out our A value in this case was negative 2. We figured out our B value was positive 1. And we figured out our C value is positive 10. So now we've got our partial fraction decomposition of this very original function. And again, um, if you had a lot of free time on your hands or uh, maybe find uh, this procedure super exciting, as I'm sure everybody does, you could always get common denominators, put it all back together, and you would see that you get this, this original expression back. So um, we're having fun, right?